So us mountain bikers, we're a very opinionated bunch. You only need to read the comments section under any product review or new product review to realize that. But if there's one brand and one product that really divides opinions, it's gonna have to be Cannondale with the lefty fork. So Cannondale's lefty fork, strut, it's been around in various forms since 2001, which is an eon in the mountain bike world. But Cannondale has an all new lefty, all new chassis, all new internals, all new everything, and one fork crown. So I'm Mike Levy, an editor at Pink Bike, and we're here in New York to learn about the new lefty and to ask Cannondale some tough questions. This is the R&D shop, so this is for the engineering team. In the back of the shop is um, what we call the Brad Room, or okay. the suspension shop. I'm here with the Director of Suspension Technology Components, Jeremiah Bubar, and that's pretty convenient because we're also here with the new Lefty Ocho, which, as you can see, single side and one crown, which is a pretty big change for you guys. This is a brand new fork, but I've always wanted to ask you guys why? I mean, the Lefty's been around now since 2000 or 2001, yeah. somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, and this is a brand new fork. You guys have obviously invested a lot of time, a lot of development, money, and effort into this thing. Why? <laughs> you know, there's, there's a lot of good forks out there right now. <laughs> yeah, totally agree. One thing that Lefty's done that no other fork has done is been excellent in what we call loaded friction. So when the fork's seeing loads and starting to bend, the roller bearings inside keep it from having really any friction whatsoever mm -hmm. where traditional fork with its bushings starts to get bindy and really kind of reduces that small bump feel. To understand Cannondale's new Ocho, we first need to understand the Ocho's origins. And to do that, we talked to Steve Extens, Chief Suspension Engineer at Cannondale. Yeah, so this one actually wasn't necessarily part of the Ocho project, Okay. but in, I believe this is roughly 2005, 2006, we had the uh, harebrained idea to take what was our left ESL model mm -hmm. and test it as a single crown. Mm -hmm. uh, cool part about this is we took a little bit of our crank technology and developed a two-piece bonded together hologram crown. It's an SI crown. It's an SI crown. Yeah, okay. So in the next fork, you know, it kind of looks a lot like a regular lefty, but what's special about it? Yeah, this was our, you know, very incognito um, proof test of the three-sided bearing technology. Mm -hmm. So we actually took Lefty 2.0 forgings and remachined them and made some small adapter pieces to be able to run different seal packages mm -hmm. uh, to actually do some real-world yeah. life cycle testing of the three-sided bearing system. Okay, and it panned out? And panned then out we move on to this. So then the next step was to prove out the single crown idea. Yes. Um, so we built some test mules before anybody rode one. We actually broke one, make sure it was It's always safe. good to check. Of course. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that ended up into what turned into the uh, ride test and initial stiffness testing. So this, we had a rough idea of, mm -hmm. of how much um, flex and strength we were gonna see in this crown and what that actually felt yeah. like in real life. And then that brings us to the new Lefty Ocho. Right, so the Lefty Ocho is the final product of yeah. really all this stuff. Yeah. So we so, have, uh, you know, we're a single crown. Yeah. The crown, obviously, if you even look at the two of these compared, you can tell that we really did beef up the crown significantly. Mm -hmm. It's both deeper and thicker in every direction to give us the stiffness we need. Mm -hmm. Three-sided needle bearings. Mm -hmm. So starting in 1995, even though you weren't thinking Lefty Ocho at that point, that's sort of the genesis of the project right there. Yeah, totally. I mean, we knew there was possibilities here, yeah. but um, you know, obviously this one still has the boot. Square sanction tube, boot. Takes up a bunch more room with the needle bearings. It still had the large 88 needle bearing packs in here, yeah. which just internally didn't allow us to have enough room to this was maxed out at 80 millimeters of travel, yeah. which was already not enough for that time period. Yeah. So we kind of pushed it aside. So now we know that Cannondale was investigating a single crown, single sided fork design way back in 1995. That's 23 years ago. But wouldn't they sell more of their own bikes if they were specking normal traditional forks? Something from Fox, RockShox, or Manitou on the front? We don't, we're Canada. We don't want to be the same as everybody else. And so, you know, we can offer a fork that nobody else has. We can make it as light as everybody else's forks. We can make it smoother than everybody else's forks. Um, we can make it stiffer than anyone else's forks. 
Okay. So yeah, we gotta be a little bit different to get there, but we're happy being that way. Okay, that's all well and good, but I mean, if you've ever read a comment section or you know, the, the comments under any review, or even go to a trailhead and you see somebody with a lefty and people are going up to them and asking, they're saying, I can't believe you ride that. Like, doesn't it lean to one side even? Like that old comment, you know? Yeah. It can't be safe, there's only one side. How are you gonna convince people? Well, you're not gonna convince everybody. We're also not trying to be one of the major players out there. We're trying to be Cannondale. We're trying to be true to who we are. And we believe that our performance is gonna speak for itself. So it isn't just that aesthetic, but like once people get out on Ocho, they're really gonna notice that benefit on the trail. And that's what's gonna bring pe more people in than just those current Cannondale lovers. Okay, that, that kind of leads me on to my next question is, so we have this beautiful bike right here. If it had a traditional two-sided fork on the front, like, yeah, it's not gonna stand out as much. It's not gonna be as unique looking, but I would guess that you would sell more of the bike, you know, Bike X, if it has a traditional fork on the front than if it had a lefty on the front. So don't you look at that and you're like, man, we're like, it's almost an uphill battle. Sure, I mean, there's more stories to tell, right? Like yeah. you gotta go out there and maybe your friends are like, how does it even work? Like, where's the other side of your fork? Yeah. Yeah. But again, it's, you know, you take a super lightweight carbon hardtail and you could be the lightest one out there, but you put the same fork on there and it's like, there isn't really anything special. You know what I mean? Once they understand the product, they understand that it's it's more than being unique. It's more than having something that's different on all your friends. It's about getting genuine performance and being able to ride faster out on the trail. Looking different is all well and good, but this new fork has to work extremely well to boot. Cannondale designed an all new damper. They're calling it the chamber damper. Let's take a look inside and see what makes it tick. But this is all new top to bottom and there's definitely been some challenges and one of them being space constraints. Space constraints are a huge challenge for us because we're integrating the air spring and the damper into one side of yeah. it. Um, we have a great example right behind you. Um, <clears throat> so when we went out to design this, we kind of knew what our upper constraint was because the knob has to clear the down tube of the bike. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, over the past, you know, several years, Cannondale's come up with their own standard of how low the knob can be uh, below the axle just for clearance of rocks and roots and other things on the trail. Mm -hmm. Everything we did had to end up between these two points. Yeah. So you effectively have half as much room to work with as other suspension manufacturers. Yes. So this is the full layout of the damper. It starts up here with the low speed compression knob. This is our lockout remote pulley. Our compression cap is the black part right there. Um, that centers our compression shaft, which has our IFP on it. That uh, purple seal is our custom IFP U-cup. We then have our lockout piston. That's our compression piston. Down here we have our rebound piston, a rebound post, and then our shaft. It's about a 10 to one ratio between the area of the shaft and the area so of the IFP. Every 10 millimeters this goes in, this moves roughly one millimeter. Exactly. Okay. So, Which is way less than an IFP on other things or you know a bladder is obviously a very different setup. Yep, yeah. the reason that it has to be that way is just to fit our space constraints. So on the topic of the IFP, you've got a whole bunch of different ones laid out here. It looks like that may have been a challenge. Yeah, there was quite a progression from where we started to where we ended up. Yeah. Um, we knew that we wanted to use a certain diameter shaft in the middle and like we talked about before, the outside um, could grow a bit based on having that nice thick uh, cross section for structure, yeah. but <clears throat> everything else of the IFP had to fit within those constraints. So one of our first samples was made out of aluminum because you could make uh, thinner walls in this than you can plastic. Mm -hmm. One of the challenges we found was that trying to use the seal itself to be the bearing that rubs against um, the top cap mm -hmm. didn't quite work. Mm -hmm. and we would have these issues where this would rock and some oil would leak. Mm -hmm. So you were looking for uh, more support to keep that, yes. keep that floating piston from rocking um, without having to put basically a, a shock bushing in there, yes. right? So it would have Which been Which would nice add too, too much height. If we could add a shock bushing, but exactly, yes. we do not Easy have solution. the stack height okay. to do that. So the first thing we had to do was diagnose the fact that it was rocking. Yeah. And one of the ways we did that is we took what we call our compression cap that sits inside the top cap 
and machine these windows in. Yeah. And that allowed us to look down and actually see what the IFP was doing. We're also um, very vigilant on how much friction we could add. Um, we wanted to keep that as low as possible yeah. because our competitors are doing that. And more seals equal more friction. Exactly. Right, okay. So we added this cap on the bottom, which increased the bearing overlap and that completely solved any of the rocking issues yep. that we could generate. And then that finally made it into the final design of okay. the IFP that you see there. So speaking of damping and pistons, we have two compression pistons here. Yeah, so overall for the entire project, we were super critical of um, everything between lockout, compression, rebound damping, but we wanted to have some of the best in class low speed compression um, adjustments. And a big part of that is the um, piston. Okay. So the original piston design worked pretty well, but after trying 14 different tunes with it, um, we realized that the tune we liked the best needed a little bit more support because there's so much open space between each side of um, the, the flow ports. Mm -hmm. And in order to make it so that the preloaded shim stack didn't crown around and then create a leak path in the center of the port, yes. uh, we had to add these supports to it. You can get the new Ocho with either a carbon chassis or an aluminum chassis. Back to Steve Extens to talk about how they manufacture the aluminum version. So, all right, Steve, what are we looking at here? They look like some pretty big chunks of aluminum. Yeah, so these are the two major components. We got the upper and the lower. Mm -hmm. The upper, we actually utilize a 3D forging process, which we've used on Lefty for uh, a bunch of years now, almost 10 years, actually. Um, so first step is pretty basic. This is your raw material. Uh, so this is the first stage. This is mostly a 2D forging process to get the basic shape. And then there's a little bit of actual machining that happens mm -hmm. between these two steps. Material removal down the center. Correct, and that's mostly to provide a, a guide for the 3D forging process. Mm -hmm. And then the actual third dimension forging process extrudes this tube section. Okay. So what that does is gives us a really good grain structure mm -hmm. in the part, yep. and it also removes a whole bunch of material that we don't have to waste or machine away. Yep. So we get almost a net shape, um, and then obviously we have a some OD machining to reduce weight, which is not necessarily possible to get that thin of a wall thickness in the forging process. We have to do some machining. We do machining for the crown steer press, there's a lot of pretty intricate 3D profiling to remove weight from the inside. Mm -hmm. And then we have the brooch on the ID, which sets up the three-sided shape. And then moving on a bit, we have some completely different shapes for the other end of the fork. Yeah, so the lower spindle, um, we've actually made a change with Ocho. Historically, these have been, all the one-piece spindles have been 3D forged. Um, this one is actually a 2D forging. Uh, we found that that actually helps the manufacturing process and able to get the stanchion tube section straighter in the end. Um, so it starts as a pretty huge bar. The raw material is actually probably about that big or so. And then this thing is just kind of crushed and rolled to give it a rough shape. So we need a bunch of material at the bottom, which would become the axle. Mm -hmm. And then the upper section obviously is a stanchion. Mm -hmm. So this is the finished forging. And then, you know, a whole bunch of finished machining. We have to, this thing is solid. So we bore out the entire ID. Mm -hmm. It's finished honed. The OD is, is polished for a uh, low friction surface. Mm -hmm. And then we machine all the flats mm -hmm. for the needle bearing races. And we actually have added a bunch of weight reduction cuts as well to get this part. This okay. is the lightest Scalloped spindle we've out. ever had on a, lefty period. So basically what I'm hearing is that there's value in being different. I'm sure you have to spend a lot of time justifying why you're so different. <laughs> uh, so for, for us, uh, yeah. for us, it, it's much the same thing. You, you just got to get to know somebody. Yeah. Right. That's you what I tell them too. Just get to know me. You'll like me. Yeah, to know you is to love you, right? Yeah. Yeah, maybe. exactly. Maybe, maybe not. Probably not actually. Yeah. And I've been doing exactly that, getting to know the new Lefty Ocho while I've been testing it over the last few months up in Squamish, British Columbia. The gist is that, despite having one crown and one side, the Ocho is more than torsionally rigid enough. 
comparable to anything else on the market, and the damper feels top notch. You want to know more about how the Ocho performs? You'll be able to read my full review on Pinkbike very soon.